Rejoice, everybody, for this is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we rejoice because you have allowed us to assemble again as one body in Christ, to worship you in spirit and in truth. Your presence is the fullness of joy. As we sing, pray, receive the word, tithe, and stir up souls to relate to Christ. Let your presence be known to each listener, especially those seeking forgiveness, healing, 
inspiration and encouragement. Let the joy of the Holy Spirit guide our shepherd today as he relates your word to us, your will to us, and your way. Let it rest on our minds and in our hearts, enabling us to confront our challenges. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, strengthen us to give our highest praise as we offer thanks for the work of Jesus Christ, who died on the Christ, on the cross, and reconciled us back to the Father. It is in the name of Jesus I pray. Amen. The words of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 6 through 7 in the NIV. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. May the Lord bless the hearing reading and understanding of his most holy word. Amen. Good morning, Resurrection. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we ought to rejoice and be glad in it. Um, aren't you glad that God blessed you to wake up this morning? Aren't you glad that God blessed you to be in his house? Aren't you glad that the Lord has blessed you uh, to know that he is your Lord and your God? I'm so grateful uh, to be with you all this morning. I'm just so happy. Uh, resurrection just to be able to draw breath one more time. And I'm grateful to see you on this first Sunday uh, of uh, this month. We thank God that God allowed us to make it to the 12th month of this year. Aren't you excited that God blessed you to be able to make it to the 12th month of this year? God has been good to us, Resurrection. Yes, even in the midst of a pandemic, the Lord has been good to us. God has blessed us to be together. So I'm thankful, brothers and sisters, to be with y'all. So let me just say, as pastor of Resurrection Baptist Church, I'm Marcus Jerkins. Uh, to all of our guests and those of you who are joining us for the first time, let me just say welcome to you and how grateful I am that you have uh, joined us this morning. I promise you that if God, brothers and sisters, has woken you up this morning, and if you give him the praise, if you receive what he has for you today, I promise you, you're going to want to come back. And I thank God for what he's doing in our midst. Listen, very quickly. 
We don't have many announcements for this week. Uh, we know we have uh, executive board coming up on Thursday at 6, 6 p.m. And we will be talking about from there, uh, our uh, budget meeting and our business meeting so forthcoming, but that information is still forthcoming. And I will let you know when we'll uh, decide to do that. Uh, but I'm thankful for you, uh, brothers and sisters, being with us on this day. And I'm excited uh, that God has blessed us. Listen, one more thing. Let me say happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy, happy, happy birthday to all of our December birthdays. May God bless you on this month. Uh, and if you have a birthday, let us know that you have a birthday. We will shout you out. We will celebrate you and we will thank God that he has given you another year of life. So again, I'm thankful uh, that God has given us a, a new series this month. And I look forward to sharing that with you. And I look forward to going over other things we'll talk about as the month goes forward, as we prepare for 2021. I do want to, have to say one more thing. Uh, let's get our hearts and minds ready for uh, uh, our watch night service. Um, and we're going to call a fast. I'm going to get back to you on that. In January, we'll have a fast and we'll talk about the options that will be available for that. And we look forward to, to coming together as a body and sanctifying ourselves for the new year that God will give us. Again, let's keep going higher in worship. God bless you. Love you. See you soon. Jesus is calling Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling Oh, come to the altar the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, Let us pray. Most heavenly and gracious and loving Father, we come once again, Lord, to first of all, worship you and praise you and lift up your precious and holy and majestic name, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the fact that we can come to you in spirit and in truth. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness, your mercy, your love, your protection, your provisions, Thank you, Lord, for taking care of us. Thank you for, for looking after us, Lord. Thank you for taking care of us and treating us better than we treat ourselves. Now, Lord, we come at this altar right now on this beautiful Sunday morning, Lord, to just to bring to you all of our prayers and supplications. There are those who are sick. There are those who are afflicted. There are those in our, our church body, Lord, who have been bereaved. So we pray for the bereaved family right now, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you will help them to know that earth has no sorrow, that heaven cannot heal. We ask, Lord, that you bless all of the sick of the church and 
those who have had challenges and issues. And we ask that you bless the families who've had loved ones who have developed COVID-19 or, or worse. So Lord, we come to you because we know that you can take care of any situation. You can fix the most impossible difficulty, no matter what it is, nothing can stop you and no, nothing can work better than you can, nobody. And so we thank you, Lord, for who you are, what you mean to us, and how you are able to take care of everything. Bless our church, bless your word as it goes out uh, throughout the whole world on this platform. Bless us and, and bless our uh, pastor. We love you, we praise you, we honor you, and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You deserve the glory and the honor. I lift my hands in worship and I bless your holy name. You deserve the glory and all the honor. I lift my hands in worship and I bless your holy name you are great you do miracles so great there is no one else like you there is no one else like you you are great you do miracles so It is indeed a privilege and an honor to come back and to talk, talk with you this morning about the great things that God has done for us. If you are uh, able to, why don't you just open up your mouth and say uh, that he is great. He does miracles so great. There's no one else. Yeah, you heard what I just said. There is no one else. There is no one else else. If you believe there's no one else like him, if you know there's no one else like the Lord, why don't you just lift your hand and say, Lord, there's no one like you. There's no one like you. There's no one like you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, that there is no one else like you. Let us, brothers and sisters, open up our Bibles to the book of Matthew, chapter one. Uh, the book of Matthew, chapter one. We are beginning a new series entitled, The King is Here. And we want us to read the scripture 
uh, for our text for preaching this morning. It reads, Matthew 1.18 says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public spec example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, you son of David, fear not, take, fear not to take unto you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost, and she shall bring forth a son, and you will call his name Jesus, and he will save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying, behold, a virgin shall be with child and she shall bring forth a son. They shall call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted God with us. Then Joseph being raised from sleep did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took unto him his wife and knew her not till she had brought forth, brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Uh, this morning, as the Holy Ghost is instructed, I just want to talk a few moments of resurrection from the subject, the presence of the king. The presence of the king. Uh, pray with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the word of God, uh, that is able to change lives. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you allow the word of God to go forth through me. Fill me with the Holy Ghost so that I may speak your words with boldness. Do not allow me to speak an enticing word of human wisdom, but by demonstration of your spirit and power, make your presence felt known and realized in and through me and allow your presence, O oh God, to be felt wherever we are. We thank you for what you're going to do. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, amen. The presence of the King. In 2012, you might remember that there was great fanfare surrounding a birth. There was great fanfare surrounding a birth because the child that was being born was being born to the house of Windsor. The house of Windsor. You may not realize that you know what house I'm talking about. The house of Windsor is the house that is currently occupying Buckingham Palace. In this moment, in the house of Windsor, great joy and mirth surrounded the house because Prince William was expecting his firstborn child. Now Smith went around the world that the, the house of Windsor was expecting a new heir to the throne. Regardless of the gender of the child, the child would be known as the new heir. There was joy, gladness all around the world. Paparazzi flooded the streets, trying to find out information about this new child because the House of Windsor would continue its line. Even though uh, Britain is now a constitutional monarchy and the monarchy does not hold the same power it used to, there's still this great joy that exceeds brothers and sisters because of this new birth. But there's a tremendous contrast between the announcement and the great fanfare that proceeded uh, from the birth of this child to the house of Windsor. There's a great uh, contrast between what occurred there and what we just read in this text. Because here we find in this nondescript city, in Bethlehem or in, in Bethlehem of Judea to be born a child 
who was not noted as anybody's great leader at the time. In fact, nobody knew anything about this birth besides Mary and Joseph. We find in our text, brothers and sisters, uh, that this thing was so nondescript, so, so covered and obfuscated that Joseph was embarrassed about it because nobody else cared about it and Joseph was embarrassed about it. He was getting ready to divorce his espousal, his, his spouse-to-be, Mary. And brothers and sisters, what is interesting is that the announcement of the House of Windsor receives great attention and has received great attention, but in Jesus' own time, when the presence of the king was about to come to the earth, nobody cared. We cared about the Windsors, but at the time of Jesus, nobody cared. But brothers and sisters, can I tell you something? That when we get finished paying attention to what happens with the Windsors and furthermore, even what happened with Meghan and Harry and their babies, brothers and sisters, when we come back to what the Bible says, we find out that the presence of this king is a presence that makes a difference in the world. And all I want to do, brothers and sisters, is talk to you about why we need to embrace the presence of this king, because it is this king who will transform us. It is this king who will lift us up out of our downtrodden state. It is this king who will give us exactly what we need because the king is here. And we need to embrace tighter like we've never held on to the king before resurrection. We need to hold on to this king. If we hold on to this king, our lives will get better. If we hold on to this king, our families will become more healthy. If we hold on to this king, we'll be able to accomplish the things that God has placed in front of us. Can I just talk to you about a couple of things, some observations that, that, are, that are very important for us to make when reading this particular text. I will be out of your way. But this text teaches us, brothers and sisters, a uh, first, that, that we have the presence of this king, this one who came to be our savior. We have this presence by the action of God, by the action of God. It's the action of God that led to the presence of the king. The king came because of God's activity in the world. Unlike uh, other human, uh, just solely human events, events that arise from human activities, this was the activity of God. It's, it's, it's there in the argument of the text because when you read it, you see that Matthew is, gives us this long genealogy that starts with Abraham and then goes through generation after generation to get us to how Jesus came to be born. It's important to note that this genealogy tries to get us from the one with whom God made the covenant Abraham to the one with whom the, the Bible says the new covenant will be brought forth. That the seed of Abraham, the true seed was never brothers and sisters, just Isaac, but it would be Jesus the Christ. And so Matthew tells us this story to get us to get our focus on the promised king. And he shows us that even in the midst of God's renewal of his covenant with us, that even with God's desire to rescue his people from bondage, to get Israel to a place where they were in communion with him, that there would be some charges possibly of illegitimacy, that there will be a challenge to the birth of the Son of God. Here's what happened. If you read in your Bible, the Bible says that when Joseph discovered that his wife, wife into, to whom he was a spouse, he was engaged to be married, they were about to go off in that culture and 
uh, perform their marital obligations. She was pregnant already. You didn't hear what I just said. She was pregnant. Now, now he, he had never touched her. He had never touched her. And, and you know, if he hadn't touched her, wasn't nobody else supposed to touch her. And so he found out that she was pregnant. He found out that he was pregnant and he was getting ready, y'all, to take her on to Judge Maybelline. No, no, he wasn't, he wasn't gonna take her to Judge Maybelline. Because, because he said, no, I'm not gonna take her to Judge Maybelline. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take her to the side here and get us a lawyer and just broker this, uh, this, this divorce because we, can, we can't have this. We, we cannot have uh, this. He was a just man. He was a righteous man. He, he said, listen, I'm going to do it quietly because I, I, I respect you. I honor you. I don't know where this baby came from, but this baby ain't mine. And so Joseph is getting ready to divorce his wife. And the Bible says that God stopped him. God said, no, don't divorce your wife. I know there's scandal involved here. I know that seems like there's scandal and it's shrouded in what seems to be illegitimacy. But this child didn't come from some dude. This child didn't come from, as, as some, some ancients uh, would say, uh, uh, one ancient named Celsus in the second century argued that Jesus' daddy was a guy named Pantera. It, no, no, Jesus didn't have a human father. Rather, Jesus was in Mary's womb by the power of the Holy Ghost. You didn't hear what I just said. Because God has done something in bringing forth his son by his own action. God, God did something. Now, here's the point, because regardless of how illegitimate it seemed, regardless of the scandal that was involved, God had acted. I said, regardless of the seeming illegitimacy, it doesn't matter how shrouded it was in scandal, God had acted. And that's good news, saints, because we all recognize that we will go through some situations in our lives that seem illegitimate. We will have things arise in our culture that make us look scandalous. But the fact that it looks that way does not mean that God can't act. In fact, brothers and sisters, the action of God not only acts in the midst of scandal, but the action of God is able to wipe the scandal away. I said the action of God is able to wipe the scandal away. And I, and I hear you say, Reverend Jerk, because I, I, I know Exactly what you're talking about, because we, we recognize that uh, there are lines of kings that have passed on in history, like King Henry VIII, who was born supposedly illegitimately to King Henry VII. And King Henry VIII passed on that illegitimate tendency because he had several children several children who were deemed illegitimate. And it happened, saints of God, uh, that when King Henry VIII had many of those illegitimate children, it happened that many of those children were not able to take on the throne. It would ultimately be his daughter, Elizabeth, who would become the Queen of England. Because as in human events, when we have scandals and we have illegitimacy, that seems to taint everything and mess everything up. Because we don't have the strength to wipe away the scandal. But brothers and sisters, when God acts, I don't care who says what you have or who you are is scandalous. I don't care how bad that situation that you find yourself in. In fact, brothers and sisters, I don't care how scandalous and illegitimate it seems for us to be able as black folk to do the stuff that we do because people say as a black person, you should not be able 
to make it in this life. I've come by to tell you, saints of God, or whatever your color is or wherever you came from, everybody has a charge of scandal. But God shows us that when he acts, when God moves, God brings his own law with him and he makes injustice become justice. He makes unrighteousness become righteousness. He makes wickedness become goodness. God, when he acts, causes what's wrong to become right. I got to move on, brothers and sisters, because this text is tailored not only to teach us that the presence of the king comes by the action of God, but secondly, through this God, through this king, we have access to this God. Here's what it says, because Joseph wanted to divorce Mary privately, but when he was thinking about it, the Bible says the angel of the Lord appeared and said, Joseph, don't put her aside. Don't, don't divorce your wife. He says, because conceived in her is something from the Holy Ghost, and she will bring forth a son, and you will call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. The Bible says that Joseph hears the word of the Lord that tells him to change his mind. Your desire, though it seems like it's just, is actually wrong because Mary did not sin. Mary was a willing vessel of God and what she carries, who she carries, is God's own son. And the Bible says, and you will call his name. Once, when he is born, you will call his name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. He will rescue his people from their sins. He will deliver his people from their sins. He will redeem his people from their sins. He will pick his people up out of the miry clay and plant, I wish I had a witness around there, their feet on a rock to stay. He's going, as I can I say it again, I say it almost every Sunday, he's going to pick them up. He's going to turn them around. He's going to place their feet on solid ground. He will be just what they need. You will call his name Jesus. And brothers and sisters, this name, Jesus, is the name that we know is the Aramaic way of saying Joshua. Joshua is the word for savior. Joshua, you know Joshua. Joshua was the second, the heir to the reign that God had given the prophets through Moses. At that time, there was no king in Israel, but the prophets reigned in Israel. They guided the people, and God said, I needed somebody who could take my people from the promised, uh, from, from Egypt, from the wilderness, into the promised land. The Bible says that God chose Joshua to do that, and God used that, not only brothers and sisters, not only Joshua in that sense, to bring the people into the promised land to fight wars on their behalf, but as a sign and a symbol that he would have another Joshua, that there would be another heir to Moses, that there would be another prophet. The Bible says that prophet, the one who would come and in whom, when the people heard the word of God, when they found the word of God in him, they would be justified. And this Joshua was the Joshua that was born 
in Bethlehem of Judea. This Joshua was the one who would rescue not his people from the Canaanites, and he would not rescue his people uh, from the surrounding nations, but God saw the principalities and the powers and the forces of wickedness that caused his people to remain in bondage because of their sins. This Joshua would save his people from the things that kept them in bondage. They wouldn't have to worry about the nations anymore because God was going to break the back of Satan himself. And the Bible says, you will call his name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. That name, brothers and sisters, gives us access because it removes the barrier between us and God. That name, that name that's above every name, that the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That name, I said that name. Do, do, I, do I have any witnesses out there who knows the name of Jesus? You will call his name Jesus because when you call on that name, that name does something for you. That name changes things. That, that name gives you strength when you're weak. That name gives you power when you're faint. That name will do something to help you. But, but, but that, that names, brothers and sisters, that always don't help and don't take us up, but take us down. There's a documentary called Meet the Hitlers. It's, it's the truth, true. I'm not, I'm not making this up. There's a documentary called Meet the Hitlers where you find out that there's a whole group of people around the world whose last name is Hitler. Yes, this is the truth. There are people, there's a guy in the documentary, I was, just felt so bad for him, his name is Gene Hitler. No relationship with a dictator, but this man is a Catholic, he, he, he goes to church, goes to mass and practices and does what he does and lives his life, but he receives persecution and trouble because his name is Hitler. Because of what that tyrannical, ridiculous despot did back in the 30s and the 40s. Everybody else who carries that name, who, who has called that name or, or, or calls that name is brought down. But can I tell y'all, brothers and sisters, I feel bad for them, and I know I, I don't think we should treat people bad because of the name Hitler, but can I tell you something? God does great things for us because of the name of Jesus. Lord have mercy. The name of Jesus doesn't take us down. I know you might feel bad sometimes because things don't always work out the way you want them to work out, but the good news is that when you meet Jesus, See, the name Hitler may block you from some things, but the name of Jesus will open up doors that nobody can close. The name of Jesus will flatten mountains in front of you. The name of Jesus will pick you up and take you to where God wants you to be. It's, I wish I had just one witness around here who can say that I thank God for the name of Jesus. I'm almost done, God bless you, because that name gives us access. When we have the presence of the king, the presence of the king is granted to us because we know his name. But not only that, brothers and sisters, I'm almost done. When we recognize that, that the presence of the king is given access to us, we have access to God. Thirdly and finally, we have something else. We have not only access to God, but we recognize that with the king, we are out now allies. We are now allies with God. Here is it. Can I show it to you? This thing, this thing makes me want to run. Here it is. And you will call his name Jesus. He will save his people from their sins. This verse 22, now all of this was done 
Matthew here is trying to give us an explanation. He says, so that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying, behold, a virgin will be with child and shall bring forth a son and they will call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted God with us. God is with us. This Hebrew word, don't let it throw you off, literally means that God is with us. Now, what this suggests is, as I preached before in Romans 5, we have peace with God, suggesting that we are now on God's side. And so God knows that there's no way on our own we can get to him. Did you hear what I just said, resurrection? On our own, there's no way we can get to him. You can't build a ladder tall enough to reach God. We know they tried it at Babel. They tried to get to him, but, but, but we can't get to him, but he can get to us. As I, as I, listen, as I look at my, my children, uh, 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 listen, uh, my children can see daddy from below as they walk up to me. And, and one thing I notice is that when they lift their hands, they can't see daddy's face to face unless daddy lifts them up. And isn't that good news that when we lift up our hands to God, God knows we can't get up to him, but all he has to do is reach down and pick us up so we can see him face to face. And can I tell y'all something? That's exactly what happened with the presence of the king. When the Lord sent his son Jesus, what he is saying is, I'm going to pick you up so you can see me now. Yet yeah, you will be able to look me in my face. We don't see him just right now, just yet. But one day, Paul said, we see through a glass darkly now. But then, I wish I had a witness around here, then face to face. And I thank God today that because God has come down and said, I am Emmanuel, I am God with you, that he's going to be with me in times of darkness. He's going to be with me in my times of despair. He's going to be with me when friends are few. He's going to be with me when my money is funny and my change is strange. He's going to be with me when nobody else wants to be with me. God will be right there with me. I'm done. Blessings on all of your resurrection on this Lord's day. But as I close my sermon out, I was reminded of an announcement I told you about uh, the Windsor House. But there was another announcement that happened a couple of weeks ago. This was unexpected, y'all. Friend of mine, lives in Mississippi and told and, and, and tells me about Jackson State and I and I'd known about Jackson State and nice wonderful HBCU wonderful place doesn't have much fanfare doesn't have much in terms of their football program but there was an announcement made that shocked everybody there was an announcement made that shocked everybody. Can I tell y'all what happened? Deion Sanders, prime time, one of the greatest defensive backs that ever played the game. He was so great, y'all. He played football and baseball and did well in both. Deion Sanders decided that he would become allies with Jackson State University. And he became the football coach for Jackson State University. And this is important because the article I read said they were shocked. People from everywhere were shocked that Deion Sanders, this high profile national football player who had retired a Hall of Famer, would decide to go to this school. It's an HBCU, but we know HBCUs don't receive that kind of attention. 
they don't receive the same kind of attention because our athletes, black athletes go to white schools because they're looking for opportunities to go from there to the NFL. And they know that when they go to these schools, that they'll have better opportunities. And so the, the, the people with power go and spend time in places that have power. But here it was that Deion Sanders did something completely unexpected. He went to Jackson State University and in his just short time of being there, they received international press because he was there. They received $12 million worth of attention because of the presence of Deion Sanders. When he became their ally, when he joined forces with Jackson State, the school's football program got better. Brothers and sisters, I'm leaving you here now, but if we can get happy off of Deion Sanders going to an HBCU, we can get happy off the fact that Deion Sanders was willing to go and become an ally of Jackson State University. Can't you also get up and get excited even in your house that God has declared that the Son of God would be called Emmanuel? Because brothers and sisters, I ain't talking about no game right now. I ain't talking about no situation where we toss a ball around. But I'm talking about having God as an ally. Because if God be for you, you didn't hear what I said. I said, if God be for you, who can be against you? Yes, Lord, because the Bible says that we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. And because we have the Son of God on our side, that don't mean that we won't go through times where things seem like they're falling apart. That don't mean that we won't go through times when it seems like things are not the way they're supposed to be. But the good news that the text gives us is uh, that the same God who is our ally uh, will be there when things fall apart uh, to put them back together again. Uh, when things seem uh, like they're not going to work out. Uh, can I tell you something? Uh, that he will uh, work them out for us. Uh, is there anybody uh, out there uh, who knows that the Lord uh, will work things out? Uh, is there anybody out there? There that knows that God is our ally and brothers and sisters uh, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world when we go through trials when we go through tests when we go through situations we don't have to look around brothers and sisters uh, but we can lift our eyes uh, to the one who has all power and I know brothers and sisters uh, when I look back over my life and I think things over, all of my good days outweigh my bad days. I can't complain because I have the Lord who has been on my side. And good news, brothers and sisters, he lets me be on his side. He holds me. He keeps me. He's right there with me. And I thank God that he's been there. Can you thank God that he's been there? Can you give him glory for being right there? No matter what you go through, the Lord is right there. He was there yesterday. He's going to be there today. And can I tell you some resurrection? If he blesses you to lift up your eyes tomorrow, he'll be there tomorrow. Shout yes. Shout yes. Shout yes. God has given us assurance that we are now allies with him because of the presence 
of the King. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the word of God. We pray now in the name of Jesus Christ that you bless us with knowledge of who you are and what you've accomplished. Just in Jesus' coming, we now know that we have your action on our behalf, access through his name, and we are allies with you. And we thank you for these things. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Listen, door the church is open. Door the church is open. We're going to move quickly. We got to get to our communion. But the door of the church is open if you want to be saved. And if you want to know how to call on the name of Jesus, I want to offer the name of Jesus to your resurrection. And our guests, to anyone who wants to know Jesus Christ, the door of the church is open. God has given you someone who will save you. Yes, you need to be saved because Jesus is the only way that you'll be able to be saved. If you want to be saved, let us know in the chat. Write us and tell us that you want to know who Jesus is, and God will grant you the opportunity to know his son. So, door of the church is open. You can say something to me, Reverend Maxwell, Reverend McPayton, Reverend Poole, or Elder Carter, and God, we can help you and we can guide you to know who Jesus is. God bless you. Uh, we will now, brothers and sisters, uh, say our uh, say our covenant. We we'll say our church covenant, and then we'll take our communion together, and then we will uh, raise our offering and we'll be dismissed. Let's uh, offer. Uh, uh, I say our church covenant, and then I'm what I'm going to do. Church covenant, brother Dylan. Church covenant, then uh, the blood, uh, and then we'll say, say our prayer, and then I do our communion. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Let us read our church covenant. Having been led as we believe by the spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our savior and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we do now in the presence of God, angels in this assembly most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge and holiness, to give it a place in our affections, prayers, and services above every organization of human origin, to sustain its worship, ordinances, discipline, and doctrine, to contribute cheerfully and regularly as God has prospered us towards its expenses for the support of a faithful and evangelical ministry among us, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel throughout the world. In case of difference of opinion in the church, we will strive to avoid a contentious spirit. And if we cannot unanimously agree, we will cheerfully recognize the right of the majority to govern. We are also engaged to maintain family and secret devotion, to study diligently the word of God, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintance, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be kind and just to those in our employ and faithful in service, we promise others, endeavoring in the purity of heart and goodwill towards all men to exemplify and commend our holy faith. We further engage to watch over, to pray for, to exhort and stir up each other unto every good word and work, to guard each other's reputation, not needlessly exposing the infirmities of others, to participate in each other's joys, and with tender sympathy bear one another's burdens and sorrows to cultivate Christian courtesy, to be slow, to give or take offense, but always ready for reconciliation, being mindful of the rules of our Savior in the 18th chapter of Matthew to secure it without delay and through life and medieval report and good report to seek to live to the glory of God who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. When we remove from this place, we engage as soon as possible to unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. Amen.
will never lose its power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, we thank you uh, for the body and blood of our Savior. We pray, oh God, that you would bless this opportunity we have to remember him and allow us, oh God, to come together as one as we celebrate your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you and we give you praise for it now. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Forgive us of our sins, oh God, and help us, oh God, to be worthy of which we part to, part, a part to partake in Jesus' name. Amen. No, the Bible says that after Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and when he had break it, he said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Let us eat together. And after the same manner, he took the cup when he had supped and said, take, drink all of you from this. This cup is a new Testament in my blood. Drink in remembrance of me. For as often as you do it, you do so the Lord's death until he comes. Let's drink together. God bless your resurrection. I love you. Listen, one more thing and we're gone. We have the, to be reminded every week, Pastor Barry gave us a wonderful seminar. and He said some very valuable things to us and I look forward to going over those things with you. You'll be receiving analysis about how we're gonna come back together as leaders to talk about those things in relationship to where we're going. But it's important for us to know that the way God as he said yesterday, when God said, I want you all to give, or I want, I want resources for my kingdom. I need money for, to things, for things to happen in the church. He doesn't rain it down from the sky. Y'all hear what I just said? It, it doesn't come down from, from the sky. It comes from our pockets because God blesses us and gives us resources. And Paul said, when he was talking to the church at Corinth, he told them, all right, I see some, some birthday. We're gonna make sure to announce those. Uh, he told them that I want to make sure that you know that when you give, if you sow sparingly, you will reap sparingly. If you sow bountifully, you will reap bountifully. Everyone, as you purpose in your heart, give, not begrudgingly nor of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. When we give, and you need to give, there's, there's a myth in the church, there's a myth that people say that, that you don't have to give. God don't need your money. Well, no, God doesn't need our money, but God blesses us for the purpose of blessing the kingdom of God because we need the church. We need God's word. We need God's word preached. We need ministry to do. We have people to feed. We have people to help. There's great things that God has in store for RBC, but we need to be generous to give. And God promises us, let me tell you something, saints. God promises us that if we give, he will be generous and blessing us. That's not, a, that's not a cliche, that's the truth of God. And we can't beat God giving no matter how hard we try. So listen, let's maintain it, brothers and sisters, resurrection, we've been doing well in our giving thus far. Let's do better, we can always do better. We can always challenge ourselves to do more, to sacrifice, and I promise you, I make you this promise, not because I made it up, but because God's word says it, that God will be faithful and blessing us. Now, let me just go ahead and say, I, I see all, I can't see all of them, but I see a whole bunch of birthday shout outs. I think I saw Rev. Maxwell, uh, Deacon Osborne, Deacon DeRay Osborne, uh, uh, Sister Norma, Sister Shirley, uh, all, all right, uh, who else? Uh, we, we see a lot of birthday shout outs today. And, and if I missed your name, just because I, I couldn't see it on the screen, and I, and I don't want to touch it just right now, but happy birthday. And I see, I saw, I think I saw uh, Dr. King said her birthday is on the 14th. Uh, we, so, so I think uh, we had a ton of birthdays, I think in either September or, and, a, and a lot of birthdays in December. So, so, so it seemed like uh, December and September, some, some, some big months for, for RBC. But anyway, happy birthday to all of you. A happy birthday, happy birthday, happy, happy birthday. I love all of you. I praise God for you. And I pray that you enjoy your day if it's your birthday. And I pray you enjoy your day because God blessed you to be alive today. Let's pray and be gone, be dismissed. God and Father, my Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you uh, for what you're doing for us today. We pray, Father, for those uh, who are suffering around the world and those who are suffering in our church those who are dealing with issues and those who have to go to the doctor and have, 
have received bad reports, we pray, oh God, that all of us will rely on the name of Jesus because he will save us. And we pray, oh God, that you help us to cling to the presence of the King because we know with you as our ally, if you be for us, no one can overcome us. We thank you, Father, for these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule and abide with us now, henceforth, and forevermore. And may this be done in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless your resurrection. I love you. I love you. And I look forward to seeing you again on Wednesday night. You have your Bibles ready. We're, 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 the announcements will be coming out. We're going to finally get to the New Testament. Talk about our Savior. So I look forward to talking with you on Wednesday night. God bless you. I love you. And I'll see you again soon. God bless you.